What's going on, guys? It's your boy, you know, the king of digital real estate, Nick Wood. Guys, when should you give up on a website? How long should you keep going? How many backlinks should you point? How much content should you, should you add in guest posts and this and press releases and the rest before you say enough is enough? And for those that are new, you may not know what we're talking about. And for me, I don't have this problem anymore because I don't build any website unless I already have a client. And I'm not gonna get a client and set up ads and send them jobs unless I've done solid, sound due diligence. However, I, more than anyone, can talk on this uh, to great lengths because I spent the first, I don't know how many years, doing exactly this, running into the same question again and again and again. Do we give up on it? It, it, oh, it's on page two. It's getting one lead. Do we, you know, double down and add double the backlinks, double the content and keep going and keep grinding and keep putting content and keep spending time and resources and money? Or do we cut it? Do we cut our losses and go to the next project? Because it's been six months. It's been nine months. It's been 12 months. For those of you that are out there that are building and and then renting, I first of all, um, you're you're doing the wheelchair method, man. You're you're, you're riding the wheelchair to wealth, which is what is talked about by uh, MJ DeMarco in the Millionaire Fast Lane. If you if you want to uh, talk or if you want to read that book, it's a phenomenal book. And he doesn't specifically talk about this model, but he talks about the wheelchair method versus the fast lane, getting there in the fast lane. This is the fast lane. Why would you not go into the market first? Why would you not use someone else's money? Why would you not sell it first so you can use that money to build out your project in full confidence and use that money to outsource it so you don't even have to touch it? Why would you build, if you're a contractor, why would you build a house and sit on it if you could sell it up front? It makes no sense. And the only people that are telling you you should build first and rent later are the people that make their money by selling you that bullshit, period. And I don't care, YouTube, if that, that curse word ruins the reach of this video. That's the facts. It is bullshit, okay? So when do you cut it? Let's talk about it. Here's what I would recommend. Number one is at some point I say, for me, this is just me personally. Again, just me speaking, just some guy that's only made a couple seven figures the last few years doing this. This, this exact model. Here's my two cents, okay? First and foremost, you stick with something long enough, you stick with a uh, 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 foundation repair Dallas, Texas. That's gonna be a beast. I can already tell you, I haven't looked at it, it's gonna be a beast. Tough niche, tough city, good luck. But you do it long enough with enough backlinks, enough content, enough uh, guest posts, enough GMB, enough time, yeah, you're gonna rank it, right? Eventually, at least theoretically. But the question is, is it worth the squeeze? So if you, if you have a website right now that you are sitting there, and as, as I'm talking about, I guarantee, let me try that snap again, boom. I guarantee you thought of a website. Oh yeah, that's the one. Oh yeah, what about that one? That, I had that same, guys, if you are somebody that's been building and then selling, you know what I'm talking about. And for those of you that have not done that, don't go down that road, come on. Come on, guys. It's, it's, it's so 2000 freaking 15, dog. It's 2016. Like, this is, this is how we do it now, period. It's just the standard. Um, anyway, here's what my recommendation would be, would be, and this is what we did when we cleaned house, when we went through, we audited, we just got rid of, is if it's been six months, if it's been three months, if it's been nine months, my recommendation to you is this. If it's getting either A, a couple leads a month organically, or B, it's ranking on page one for something or a couple of terms, bottom, or I would even consider saying like top of page two, one of those two things, very top of page two, page one ranking, or and or a couple of leads. What I would do is I would go and I would do a proper due diligence. I would do a proper assessment of that city and niche combination. Why? Well, I just did it, Nick. Yeah, things change, bruh. Things change, lady. Things change. Maybe there's somebody else that slipped in there and you don't know. Maybe Google's changed who they put in what order and there's somebody that's really piping hot that's doing work. You don't know, especially if it's been in nine months, 12 months. Just because you did the due diligence last year does not mean that due diligence is still, is still good, dude. It's just like regular cities. 
Uh, there's years, right? One year, a city could be hot and people are buying and people are selling. And the next year, there's a recession. Or the next year, a factory or a company goes out of business and no longer is that demand still there. It's the same exact thing. So if you're getting leads or if it's ranking uh, for a few keywords, I would go do a proper due diligence. Make sure it's low-hanging fruit. And low-hanging fruit defined as if you go in, you're going to be able to rank this thing fairly rapidly. Now, I have a whole process. I have a whole you know, got to check this box. And if it checks this box and go to this, and if it checks this box, go, blah, blah, blah. I got this entire due diligence process that's taken me years and years to refine that I sell in my course or that comes to my course, but develop your own. Uh, if you're an SEO expert, whatever, there are telltale signs that something is going to be easy to rank. That's the first thing you need to do. Um, and then based on that, I would make my decision. If it's still, um, if it's still doable, if it's still low hanging fruit and there's still volume and the cost per click is still low, do it, dude. The, the, the thing's already got juice. It's already got time and it's, it's doable. But if you, if you look at the due diligence and all of a sudden it's like remotely competitive, I'm out, dude. I'm out. I'm cutting it out. I'm saying, hey, I lost money. I, I learned. I will never build again unless I pre-sell first and I chalk it up to a loss. Guys, I literally wasted six figures, uh, maybe multi six figures doing this, building hundreds of websites in the wrong cities and wrong niches. And it was painful. And I know, and you hang on to it and you're emotional about it. And you're like, I don't want to get rid of it. I put all this time and I've put all this energy and I've written all this content and we had somebody overseas and I personally did it. And it's so sad. Just cut it, dude. Cut it. Now, if you have a website, it's been six, nine, 12 months. It's not producing leads, not ranking. Cut that today. Cut it, dude. Or turn it into a, or, or say, hey, I'm going to go and rank this thing, whatever. And let me look at the juice and I'm going to use it as a PBN or I'm going to use it to get backlinks. But to, to continue to nurse something, to continue to just put money into something that's not worth a squeeze is, is something only people that are allergic to money would, would do. And I hung on to my sites for too long. We'll get to it. We'll get to Why? When there's easier deals out there, why would you even waste your time? Again, this is something that I've done from experience. This is how I do it. You don't have to do what I did. You don't have to like money. You don't have to like pre-selling deals instead of you know rolling the dice. This is what I do. Hope you enjoy it.